I'm going to be doing a player card analysis of the newly re released repackaged Dream Chaser Hero expansion. That includes the Great Havens expansion and the six adventure packs of the Dream Chaser cycle. I'm going to start off with the Noldor, since this is the main theme of this cycle. The heroes are cured in the shipwright, that's a 12 cost spirit hero with 4 willpower, 2 attack, 2 defense, and four hit points. It's Noldor Noble. Draw one additional card at the beginning of the resource phase. Force. After drawing cards at the beginning of the resource phase, choose and discard one of those cards. So you have to discard one of the cards that you just drew, not any card from your hand. And the next hero is Galdor the Havens. Nine threat lore hero with two willpower, two attack, one defense, and four hit points. Noldor. Response. After drawing your setup hand, instead of taking a mulligan, you may discard any number of cards from your hand, then draw that many cards. Action. If you have no cards in your hand, draw six cards. Limit once per game. So those are the two heroes that come with the expansion. And now there's three spirit cards. Glorpendel is a five cost spirit ally with three willpower, three attack, one defense, and four hit points. Noldor, Noble Warrior. Glorfindel can be played from your discard pile. Action. Discard a card from your hand to ready Glorfindel. Limit once per phase. We have the Sailor of Loon. He's a two cost spirit ally. With one at willpower, one attack, zero defense, and two hit points. Noldor Scout. While the top card of your discard pile is an event, Sailor of Loon gets plus one willpower and gains cannot be damaged while committed to the quest. And to the sea, to the sea. A one cost spirit attachment, song. Attached to a Noldor character. Action. Exhaust to the sea to the sea and discard X cards from your hand to reduce the cost of the next Noldor ally. Play this phase by X to a minimum of one. So you don't even have to play the Noldor ally. If you're playing multiplayer, other people could play it. And for lore. We have the Linden Navigator, a two cost lore ally with two willpower, one attack, one defense, and two hit points. Noldor Scout, Linden Navigator does not exhaust to commit to a quest and can commit to a quest while exhausted. Forced, after resolving a quest in which Linda Navigator was committed, either discard it from hand, from play, or discard one card from your hand. And we have Enlodris Caregiver. He's a two cost lore ally with one willpower, zero attack, one defense, and two hit points. Noldor Healer, 
Action. Discard a card from your hand to heal one damage on any character. Limit twice per round. And for tactics, we have the Missile Wand Sea Watcher. A two cost tactics ally with one willpower, one attack, zero defense, and two hit points. Moldor Warrior. While the top card of your discard pile is an ally, Mithlon Sea Watcher gets plus two attack and gains ranged. Then we have the Veterinary Sword Elf. She's a three cost tactics ally with one willpower, one attack, one defense, and three hit points. Noldor Warrior. Veterinary Sword Elf gains plus one attack and plus one defense. Well, for each copy of Veterinary Sword Elf in your discard pile. And we are revealed in Wrath. A one cost tactics event. Play only if you control a Noldor hero. Action. Choose a non unique enemy until the end of the phase. Treat the chosen enemy printed text box as if it were blank, except for traits. And in leadership, we have the Warden of the Havens. He's a two cost leadership ally, zero willpower, one attack, one defense, three hit points, Noldor warrior. While the top card of your discard pile is an attachment, Warden of the Havens gets plus two defense and gains Sentinel. And for neutral, we have Guardian of Rivendell, three cost neutral ally with one willpower, two attack, three defense, and three hit points. Noldor Warrior as an addition, co additional cost to play Guardian of Rivendell from your hand. You must discard two cards from your hand. And the last Noldor card is Narya. It's a two cost neutral attachment. Ring artifact attached to Kirin in the Shipwright or Gandalf. Attached character gets, gains the leadership resource icon. Action. Exhaust Narya an attached character to choose and ready up to two allies. Each of those allies gets plus one attack and plus one defense until the end of the phase. Starting to get to the point where the focus of this trait is discarding cards and the playing cards in your discard pile and focusing on what you card you have on top of your discard pile. A card that doesn't come in this cycle that comes in the Foundations of Stone and the Dwarf Elf cycle is the Light of Valor. It's a one cost Spirit attachment attached to a Noldor or Sylvan hero. Attached hero does not exhaust to commit to a quest. So if you attach that to Kirdan, you can use his four willpower to quest and be ready for using his two attack or two defense, and if he has 
Nari attached to him. Besides using his four willpower, you could exhaust him to ready up two allies. And for the card that came in the last repackaged cycle that Angmar awakened, Hero Expansion was the Elven Light, where you can discard it and then play it from your discard pile, spending one spirit resource and drawing a card. But that helps out with Glorfindel, Maladris Caregiver. Linda Navigator, To the Sea to the Sea, Sailor of Loon, and the Guardian of Rivendell for getting the benefit of those cards. And another card from the Angmar Awakened Hero expansion was the Lords of the Eldar. Or it can only be played from your discard pile and you place it at the bottom of your deck. Then all Noldor characters get plus one willpower attack and defense until the end of the round. That revealed in Wrath is a good card to get rid of cards like the elephants where they can only take three damage a round if you play this then you can destroy them all in one turn so there's all the noldor cards. For Gondor, we have Prince Emmerhill. He's an 11 threat tactics hero with two willpower, three attack, two defense, and four hit points. Gondor, noble warrior, combat action. Spend one resource from Prince Emmerhill's resource pool to search the top five cards of your deck. For an ally who shares at least one trait with him, and put that ally into play, shuffle your deck. At the end of the phase, if that ally still is still in play, shuffle it into your deck. Limit once per round. And for Spirit, we have the Linear Sea Captain, a three cost Spirit Ally with two willpower, zero attack, one defense, and two hit points. Gondor, response. After you play Linear Sea Captain from your hand, if you paid all of its resource cost from a single hero's resource pool, both that hero and Linear. Sea Captain, do not exhaust to quest this round. In lore, we have Ioris, a zero cost lore ally, zero willpower, zero attack, zero defense, and one hit, one hit point. Gondor Healer. Cannot attack or defend. Action. Spend one lore resource to exhaust Ioris, then heal three points of damage on a character. Any player may trigger this effect. The Guardian of Stillion. A one cost lore ally. With zero willpower, one attack, zero defense, and one hit point. Gondor Ranger. Response. After 
Guardian of Asylian enters play. Return enemy engage with you to the staging area. The leadership. We have the Knight of the White Tower. A four cost leadership ally. With two willpower. Two attack. Three defense. And three hit points. Gondor Warrior. Knight of the White Tower. Three sources. Cost must be paid from a single hero's resource pool. The Rod of the Steward. A zero cost leadership attachment item attached to a Gondor hero. Spend two resources from attached heroes. Resource pool to draw one card. An in service of the steward. A one cost leadership attachment title attached to a character. Attached character gains the Gondor trait. For tactics, we have the master ironsmith. Three cost tactics ally with one willpower, one attack, one defense, and two hit points. Gondor Craftsman response. After you play Master Ironsmith from your hand, if you paid all of its resources from a single hero's resource pool, attach a weapon or armor attachment from your hand or discard pile to that hero without paying its resource cost. And the Soldier of Dor and Ross is a two cost tactics ally with zero willpower, one attack, one defense, and two hit points. Gondor Warrior. Response. After Soldier of Dor and Ross enters play, Reduce the cost of the next tactics card you play this phase by one. And then we have a Prince of Dorm Roth, a three cost neutral attachment title attached to Prince Emerhill. Prince Emerhill gains the Outlands trait. While you control Outlands allies that belong to four different spheres, add one additional resource to Prince Emerhill's resource pool when you collect resources during the resource phase if Prince Emerhill is a hero. So there's all the Gondor cards. You got card draw that's not so much in leadership, but you have a lot of resources in leadership. Healing, but the big Boost is the hero, Prince of Emerhill. Because he doesn't have to be ready to be able to use it. And paying only one cost to put any ally in the top five that shares a trait with him can be very beneficial. The ba biggest bang for your buck with using Prince Emerhill is if you reveal Bjorn. Bjorn's from the corset. He's a six cost 
tactics ally with one willpower, three attack, three defense, and six hit points. He's got an action that Bjorn gains plus five attack until the end of the phase. At the end of the phase in which you trigger this effect, shuffle Bjorn back into your deck. But you're gonna, he's going to be shuffled back into your deck anyway if he's still in play, so you're paying one tactics resource for a eight attack or three defense ally. I'm going to be doing the scout trait and location control. You have one hero. It's Lanwin. She's a nine threat spirit hero. With two willpower. Three attack. One defense. And three hit points. Dale scout. Ranged. Response. After an encounter card with Surge is revealed, he's a ready land win. We give her plus two willpower until the end of the phase. Limit twice per phase. So she's good in quests that have a lot of Surge. In Spirit, we have Sulian. She's a four cost Spirit ally. A three. Willpower, zero attack, two defense, and two hit points. Dunedain Scout, action. Spend one lower resource to exhaust Sulian. Then each location in the staging area gets minus one threat until the end of the phase. Any player may trigger this action. Rovanian Outrider, a three cost spirit ally with one willpower, two attack, one defense, and two hit points. Dale Scout, response. After Rovanian Outrider commits to the quest, place one progress on a location in the staging area. If that location is not explored, by this effect, give Rovanian Outrider plus one willpower until the end of the phase. And the Woodland Courier. She's a two cost spirit ally with one willpower, one attack, zero defense, and one hit point. Sylvan Scout. Response. After Woodland Courier enters play, place one progress on a location. Two progress instead if that location has the forest trait. Scouting Party. A two cost spirit event. Response. After you commit characters to the quest, if each character you have committed to the quest is a scout, each of those characters gets plus two willpower until the end of the phase. And he's blind. A one cost spirit attachment item add to a location. Limit one per location. Response. After a player plays a Sylvan ally, from his hand, place one progress on attached location. In lore, we have the Mirkwood Explorer, a three cost lore ally, with two willpower, one attack, zero defense, and two hit points. Woodman Scout. Response. 
After Mirkwood Explorer quest successfully, place one progress on it. Action. Exhaust Mirkwood Explorer to move all progress from it to a location in play. Guard it ceaselessly. Zero cost lore attachment condition attached to a location. Action. Exhaust a ranger or scout character to give attached location minus two threat until the end of the phase. Explorer's Almanac. A zero cost lore attachment item attached to a location in the staging area. Progress from questing successfully may be placed on this location before it is placed on the current quest. So location, location that the Explorer's Almanac is attached to, you can put excess progress under that location to explore it. And the Evening Star, two cost lore event, action, place two progress on any location. Resolve that effect again for each copy of the Evening Star currently in your discard pile. You may choose different targets. And in leadership, a Marian, Marrier's Compass, a one cost leadership attachment item attached to a leadership or a scout character response. At the beginning of the travel phase, exhaust Mariner's Compass and attach character to search the top five cards of the encounter deck for a location. Switch that location with location in the staging area. Shuffle the encounter deck. So here's all the scout and location control cards. You can use the Mirkwood Explorer as a nice quester and then when you need to explore a location you can just exhaust them and move the progress that you've collected from questing successfully onto that location. If you've got a lot of willpower in your deck you can explore locations with the Explorer's Almanac. If you have nasty cards, locations in the staging area that will affect you when they're, you travel to them, you can use the Mariner's Compass to shuffle them back in and hopefully get a location that's not as bad. nice location control with the Ravanian Outrider that you only want it, need to put progress onto one location instead of the northern tracker that you have to put it on all locations. And if you're playing with just a scout deck, the scouting party can give you a big boost willpower and if you are playing multiplayer and you're getting location locked Sulian is a big help because all you need to spend is one lore resource that any player may spend to reduce all locations in the staging area by one Now for Rohan, we have Elf Helm, 
He's a 10 threat leadership hero with two willpower, two attack, two defense, four hit points. Rohan Scout Warrior. Each spirit hero with an attached mount gets plus one willpower. Each tactics hero with an attached mount gets plus one attack. Each leadership hero with an attached mount gets plus one defense. And tactics, we have Derwine. He's a four cost tactics ally with zero willpower, one attack, three defense, and three hit points. Rohan warrior, sentinel, action. While Derwine is defending, spend one leadership resource to cancel the shadow effect dealt to the attacking enemy. Any player may trigger this action. And in leadership, we have Kirill. It's a two cost leadership ally with one willpower, two attack, zero defense, and two hit points. Rohan Scout. Action. Spend one spirit resource to ready Kirill. Then you may give control of Kirill to another player. Any player may trigger this action. Limit once per phase. So if a person is in need of attack or defense, you can give them to another player. You've got a nice strong sentinel with three defense. And you can have a lot of fun playing around with Mount attachment. So there's the Rohan cards. And for Hobbits, we have no heroes, but we do have Sam Gamgee. He's a three cost spirit ally with two willpower, one attack, one defense. And two hit points. Hobbit. Reduce the cost to play Sam Gamgee by two if you control Frodo Baggins. After a player raises his threat, that player may spend one spirit resource to ready Sam Gamgee. He gets plus one willpower, attack, and defense until the end of the round. Limit once per round. We got 11 Z's, a one cost spirit event. Play only during the, after the staging step. Quest action. Choose X questing Hobbit characters you control. Ready each chosen character and remove them from the quest, then reduce your threat by X. And then in lore, we have Robin Smallborough, a two cost lore ally with two willpower, zero attack, zero and for Sylvan, we have Argolad, a nine threat lore hero. Two willpower, two attack, one defense, and four hit points. Sylvan Scout, ranged, action. Exhaust Argolad to choose an enemy in the staging area. Until the end of the phase, that enemy gets minus X threat, where X is Argolad's attack. If this effect Reduces the enemy's threat to zero. Deal one damage to it. Limit once per round. 
and the Marksman of Lorien. A three cost tactics ally, but zero willpower, three attack, zero defense, and two hit points. Sylvan Warrior, ranged. Response. After Marksman of Lorien enters play, choose an enemy. That enemy gets minus two defense until the end of the round. So this is a good card to combo with straight shot. That you discard a card if it has zero defense. It also works good in a Prince Emmerhill deck. You need a card that's got range, so it's good attacking and reducing defense. So there's the Sylvan cards. Now for Dwarf, we have no heroes, but we do have a Zane Silverbeard. He's a three cost tactics ally with zero willpower, three attack, two defense, and two hit points. Dwarf Warrior response. After a Zane Silverbeard participates in an attack that destroys an enemy, spend one tactics resource to deal two damage to another enemy that shares a trait with the destroyed enemy. Any player may trigger this response. We got the Dwarven Cell Sword, a one cost leadership ally with two willpower, two attack, two defense, and three hit points. Dwarf Warrior. Fourth. At the end of the round, discard Dwarven Cell Sword unless the players as a group spend one leadership resource. And the Arid Luin Miner. A three cost neutral ally. It's one willpower, one attack, one defense and two hit points. Dwarf response. After Erluin Miner is discarded from the top card of your deck, from the top of your deck, put it into play under your control. So you, this is like you're replaying them every time. If you pay the resource at the end of the round, this works good in the dwarf mining deck where you discard the top card of your deck. And this works good in a direct damage deck. So there's the dwarf cards. The rest of the cards in the expansion are a mixed bag of different things. So I'm going to go over them by spear, starting with tactics. Last hero in the expansion is Nasia. She's an eight threat tactics hero with one willpower, two attack, two defense, and four hit points. Corsair, warrior. Resources, Inasia's resource pool cannot be used to pay for allies. Action, Inasia's is attacking or defending, spend one resource from her resource pool to give her plus two attack or plus two defense for this attack. Grappling Hook is a one cost tactics attachment item attached to a character. Quest action, discard Grappling Hook and exhaust attached character to commit attached character to the quest using its attack instead of its willpower or instead of its defense if the current quest is has the siege keyword. And Raven of War, a two cost tactics attachment, item, armor, weapon, 
attached to a warrior character. Raymond of War counts as two restricted attachments. Attached character gets plus one attack, plus one defense, and plus two hit points. Vigilant Guard, a three cost tactics attachment, skill, attached to a warrior character. No, one per character. Attached character gets plus two hit points. Response. When another character would be assigned any amount of damage, place one of that damage on attached character instead. Knife work. One cost tactics event. Action. Choose a player. Each enemy engaged with that player gets plus gets minus one defense until the end of the phase. Then the players as a group may spend two lore resources to have the chosen player draw one card each time he attacks and destroys an enemy this phase. Battle Fury, a one cost tactics event. Play only before the staging step. Quest action, exhaust the hero you control to immediately declare it as an attacker and resolve its attack against an eligible enemy target. Then the players as a group may spend one spirit resource to commit that hero to the quest. Last Stand, a zero cost tactics event. Response, after a warrior character is destroyed while defending against an enemy attack, Deal damage to the attacking enemy equal to that character's printed attack. A Skyward Volley, a two cost tactics event. As an additional cost to play Skyward Volley, exhaust a ranged character you control. Combat action, deal two damage to an enemy engaged with a player. Resolve that effect Again, for each copy of Skyward Volley currently in your discard pile, you may choose different targets. So there's the rest of the tactics cards. Raymond of War is a good attachment in the Three Hunters contact, contract quest. Because he counts as two restricted attachments, so you can build it up quick. And Vigilant Guard is good attachment to have if you've got a lot of hit points and you've got a lot of other characters that are delicate that need help. The leadership. We have the Armor Destrier, two cost leadership attachment. Attached to a leadership or sentinel hero, restricted. Response, after attached hero defends against an attack, exhaust Armor Destrier to ready attached hero. Then discard a shadow card from another enemy engaged with a defending player. Dunedain Remedy, a zero cost leadership attachment. Signal, attached to a hero. Response, after Dunedain Remedy is attached to a hero, heal one damage to that hero. Action. Pay one resource from attached hero's resource pool to 
to attach Dunedain Remini to another hero. Ruin Master. A one cost leadership attachment. Attached to a ranger or leadership hero. Response. After a signal attachment is attached to a hero, exhaust Ruin Master to add one resource to that hero's resource pool. So you add it to the hero that the signal was attached to, not the hero that the Ruin Master is attached to. Hold the line, a zero, a zero cost leadership event, response. When an enemy attacks a player, that player may declare up to three eligible characters as defenders against this attack. Then the players as a group may spend two tactics resources to ready each defending character that takes no damage from this attack. Cap Captain's Wisdom a zero cost leadership event resource action exhaust a noble hero you control to add two resources to that hero's resource pool an anchor watch a two cost leadership event response after an enemy is declared as an attacker against you, declare an exhausted character you control as a defender. Resolve that effect again for each copy of Anchor Watch currently in your discard pile. All chosen characters are defending against this attack. So there's all the leadership cards. Armor Destrier is good at getting rid of Shadow cards and reading char your character. Dunedain Remedy is good for healing. Captain's Wisdom is good for resources. Along with the Ruined Stone, a Ruined Master. So there's all the rest of the leadership cards. In lore, we have Entangling Nets, a one cost lore attachment, trap, play Entangling Nets into the staging area unattached. If unattached, attach Entangling Nets to the next eligible enemy that enters the staging area. Attached enemy gets minus two attack and minus two defense. Ranger Spear, a one cost lore event attached to a ranger character, restricted. Attached character gets plus one attack. Plus two instead when attacking an enemy with an attachment on it. Heed the Dream. A one cost lore event. Action. Choose a player. That player searches the top five cards of his deck for a card, adds it to his hand, and shuffles his deck. Then the players as a group may spend three leadership resources to have that player search his deck for another card and add it to his hand, shuffle his deck. The Houses of Healing, a five cost Lore event, 
you may exhaust any number of healer characters you control as part of this card's cost. Reduce the cost to play this card by one for each healer character you exhausted in this way. Refresh action. Choose a hero in any player's discard pile. Put that hero into play under its owner's control with one damage on it. Interrogation. One cost. Lore event. Action. Choose an enemy with an attached trap card. Look at the top X cards of the encounter deck where X is that enemy's printed threat. You may discard one of those cards, return the rest to the top of the deck in the same order. Arrows from the trees. A one cost lore event. Play only after making engagement checks. Encounter action. If no enemies were engaged this phase, deal one damage to each enemy in the staging area. Then the players as a group may spend three tactics resources to deal two additional damage to each enemy in the staging area. So there's the rest of the lore cards. You've got a good card to scout for cards, more trap cards, cards to bring your heroes back from the discard pile, and a weapon in lore. For spirit, we have Windflaw, a one cost spirit attachment. Mount, attached to a spirit hero or Eowyn. Restricted, attached character gets plus one willpower. Response, after attached character is removed from the quest, exhaust Windflaw to commit Attach character to the quest. Elwing's Flight. A two cost spirit event. Quest action. Ready a questing character and give that character plus one willpower until the end of the phase. Resolve this effect again for each copy of Elwing's Flight currently in your discard pile. You may choose different targets. Tides of Fate, a zero cost spirit event. Response, when a shadow card increases an enemy's attack by any amount, increase the defending character's defense by three for that attack. Then the players as a group may spend two tactics resources to ready the defending character and give it plus three attack for its next attack this phase. Inspiring Presence. Two cost spirit event. Action. Choose a hero you control. Each hero with a lower threat cost than the chosen hero gets plus two defense until the end of the phase. Then the players of the group may spend two leadership resources to give plus two attack to each hero with a lower threat cost than the chosen hero until the end of the phase. So there's the rest of the spirit cards. Windflaw is good in a quest that removes characters from the quest. And Elwing's Flight is good at readying characters and giving them willpower. neutral. We have Strider. One cost neutral attachment. Title. Attached to a hero. While you control two or fewer heroes, attached hero does not exhaust to commit to the quest. While you control five or fewer characters, 
attached hero gets plus two willpower. Justice shall be done. A zero cost neutral event. Limit one per deck. Planning action. Add justice shall be done to the victory display to draw three cards and add three resources to the resource pool of each hero you control. At the end of the round, you are eliminated from the game. So Strider is a good card to have in a Grey Wanderer contract deck and a Three Hunter contract deck. And Justice Shall Be Done It's a lot it's good for a last gasp when you're playing and you know you're gonna be losing at the end of the round. So it won't matter if you're eliminated because I've used this card before in Mount Doom when I had one resource left and at the end of the round I would be removing that last resources so I would be the game would be over so I played this and won the game so it can be a good card in key situations so last the rest of the neutral cards. The two best heroes I think in this expansion are Kiridan the Shipwright and Prince Emmerhill. The four best allies Lorfindel, Zane Silverbeard, Sam Gamgee, and Ioris. Attachments, Naria, To the Sea, To the Sea, Armored Destrier and Raymond of War. For events, the Evening Star, Heed the Dream, Scouting Party, and Revealed in Wrath. I would say the best. Improved Spear, Spirit, and the best improved trait, Noldor. Hope you learn some things from this video. Enjoyed watching, and have a great day.